everything that you've heard mentioned here at some level. But what I wanted to focus on was uh, the, uh, the sexy issue, unexploded ordinance. Um, I introduce myself. My name is Kurt Gandy. I'm the chair of the Ordinance and Explosive Works <coughs> Committee uh, for the Restoration Advisory Board. I'm the co-chair of the Restoration Advisory Board with Neil Youngblood. Uh, there's, there's several RAP members here, Mary Miles, uh, uh, LeVon Stone, and I hope I'm not missing anybody. Um, but anyway, uh, the significance of what I wanted to mention to uh, this group is that uh, um, like a week to 10 days after President Clinton was here to dedicate our university, a uh, practice grenade, and I think if you look on your chart here, I think it's the MK2, correct me if I'm wrong, Colonel Jones, but it was either that one or the, uh, uh, the uh, M67, but it was a practice grenade that was found on CSUMD property, and uh, they had to send somebody from Moffitt to come down to dispose of that or check it out because it went through the state emergency response system the contractors on Fort Ord were not allowed to deal with that. So that raises an issue, and, and I wrote some comments here, and I'll be brief, but I think it's something that needs to be raised. And I recognize the fact that Fora and Congressman Farr and uh, Colonel Jones and the Restoration Advisory Board uh, has been working together to try to deal with this problem. However, what I'm outlining here is that there's a, there's a paucity of regulation that allows us to move forward. This is always going to be a problem until something's done, so I'll just go right to my comments. I am very concerned that the confused state of government regulations as they apply to unexploded ordinance, it burdens the UXO cleanup process. When, you, when we consider the US EPA's proposed munitions rule, uh, which was published in the Fe Federal, uh, Federal Register November 8, 1995, the proposed muni munitions rule includes an alternative that preempts state's authority in regulating UXO cleanup. I am extremely anxious that the proposed rule will proceed, proceed to self-regulate, self-regulation by the Army and the Department of Defense. Furthermore, I am deeply concerned that the military will, will restrict UXO cleanup at Fort Ord to satisfy their needs. It is my opinion that the result of this quote, self-regulation will create a buyer's beware market. And this is something that I think that people who are inheriting property at Fort Ord need to be very aware of. If, and fails to address the needs and concerns of our communities. What the Army is trying to justify is that all decisions regarding UXO cleanup be made by them. However, there are many opinions to the contrary, some of which have been presented in documents by the United States uh, Environmental Protection Agency, refer referring specifically to Fort Ord. The, doc, uh, the Department of Defense Inspector General's report of November 22, 1994, specifically outlines problematic issues and says that the state should have the authority to participate in regulation of unexploded ordinance. And the state of California maintains it has the authority to regulate UXO cleanup under preemptive precedents established by the EPA. I participated in the Military Munitions Waste Working Group of the Western Governors Association, and I recognize some people that were there also, Laura Lee Martin and Dr. Gill, and, uh, and we've had a lot of uh, talks about this uh, within the group, a very large group across the United States. And I recall a report in which the working group's conclusions was, quote, UXO cleanup is hindered by a lack of rules. <coughs> This problem is festering at Fort Ord. It threatens the useful conversion of this closing military base. It is my understanding that the regulatory approach for UXO cleanup at Fort Ord is still in the, quote, informal dispute resolution process, which is mandated by the Federal Facilities Agreement signed at Fort Ord, which is an agreement between the regulators and the primary responsible party that how we're going to go through this process of, of cleaning up the problems at Fort Ord. And, and has been for approximately a year and a half in the informal dispute resolution process. And I might mention also that it's now in the Department of Justice because it's a, it could be a constitutional issue over states' rights. Um, my question is, what action, oh, excuse me, I jumped the paragraph here. I recall a congressional hearing held by Rep Representatives George Miller and Sam Farr on May 2nd, 1994 at the Seaside City Hall. 
It was an oversight hearing before the Committee of Natural Resources titled Man Managing Unexploded Ordinance on Federal Lands. My question is, what action has Congressman Farr taken in response to that hearing that will address the issues I've just raised? And my second question is also more specifically, I ask, does Congressman Farr support the Department of Defense's plan to preempt state's authority to regulate UXO cleanups? And I respectfully submit those questions to you. Thank you, Kurt. I'll just, I, as you pointed out, we did have the first hearing that's ever been held on uh, cleanup in Fort Oregon. I'm, I'm on that committee. George Miller was there. And the chair and the staff uh, took down uh, the comments from the testimony that was delivered. Uh, we've taken those back to Washington and lined them up against the existing law and trying to figure out where we need to change federal law. That's all, all we, we can do. And in the meantime, uh, George Miller lost his chairmanship because of the <coughs> party from over in control of Congress. They have not been interested in delegating any of this to the states. Uh, and it's actually, I think you'll see very strong, strong, uh, even among Congress, a desire that the responsibility for ordinances is going to remain at the federal level and not be delegated to the states. As you know, even to be a private contractor with the military to clean up ordinances, as a civilian, you have had to go on through the Indian head, I mean, the Indian head you had training. I mean, they won't even they won't hire you if you don't have a certificate from them. So it's been a very uh, strictly controlled process uh, by the federal government. I think the issue is well taken if you indeed believe that the process is failing to do, you know, clean is clean. They've got to clean it up, whether it's the beaches or whether it's the unexploded ordinances or whether it's the underground flume or whether it's the lead-based uh, paints in the houses. Those things, and we created standards for that, uh, of what, where you say it's clean. If, if indeed uh, you don't think that the cleaning up the unexploded ordinances uh, is, is adequate, then and that's a question. I'm not, I'm not so much the bureaucracy, but the, the bottom line simplicity of it is, 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 it, is it adequate? Uh, and I think that there's room for a discussion of that. I understand that through the process, you know, it, when you do an unexploded ordinance cleanup plan, there, you do have public comment? Yeah, that's correct. And one of the problems that, that Kurt's really alluding to is the fact that the, the Department of the Army and U.S. EPA spent um, a, a good year discussing exactly how we should move forward in the, in the ordinance cleanup here on Fort Ord. We did get direction last fall, and we are producing, we are proceeding with the, the ordinance cleanup under Superfund. We're using regulations under the National Contingency Plan to do the ordinance removal actions on, on Fort Ord. Uh, while the, this discussion was going on, we were continu continuing to remove ordinance in the areas outside of the impact area under the time critical removal action, which is also, um, it's also a super fund action. It's described under the National Contingency Plan. And the Army, as a part of the Department of Defense, has the authority, the, the removal response authority, for military munitions. That's specifically uh, we proceeded with the time critical removal action in order to protect the public that were, you know, as the university is developing and so forth and so on, we wanted to be sure that we moved forward even though the discussions were continuing. The result of the, of the discussions, at least at this point, uh, and, and again, you know, you can never be sure that everybody's agreeing all the time, but the Army is proceeding to do the ordinance cleanup as a removal action under, under Superfund, under CERCLA. Uh, in the process of doing that, we have to produce an engineering evaluation cost analysis. We're, we have a contractor working on that right now through Huntsville Division Board of Engineers. Uh, we anticipate that that document will be ready for public review in about uh, five to six months. We're trying to push the court of, to work it a little faster. They, they seem to have a rather leisurely timeline. We don't really understand base closure yet, I think. But uh, we're, we're trying to force them to, to shorten the timeline a little bit. When that document's available, it will not only address the cleanup that we're going to do, it will also address the cleanup that we've done. Describe it to the public so that, so that the public, the regulatory agency, everyone can comment on it and, and give us their opinion, and then we can incorporate opinions. Perhaps we will have to do further cleanup, perhaps we won't, but we will. everyone will know exactly what we're doing. Um, and again, that, there is a public comment period associated with that. We're expecting it to be sometime. And I would like to uh, respond to that. I'm fully aware of all of those things, and I still feel it's a very critical issue. One of the things that the folks in this room may not be aware of is that right now the EPA has just closed its public hearing uh, uh, time frame on the munitions rule, the Federal Facilities Compliance.
Compliance Act of October 1992 gave the administrator of the EPA the authority and the responsibility to promulgate rules and regulations on when military munitions are a hazardous waste to become subject to RICRA and the CERCLA, which are the two response uh, actions that are going on at Fort Ord. And so the point is, is that the rule is supposed to be final on, was originally supposed to be final on the 1st of October. It's been pushed back to the 31st of October. And the record of decision, which is the final contractual agreement between the Department of Defense, the EPA, and the concerned parties that addresses Fort Ord being a Superfund site, is being moved forward. So what is actually happening is they're going to go for a record of decision on a final agreement to address <coughs> all the contaminants and cleanup items on Fort Ord, and the rule will not be in place by which you that we could have scrutiny of the ordinance cleanup. And so, you know, I, I've been watching this for a long time. I'm a federal employee. I worked at Fort Ord uh, since the early 80s, and I was a health and safety officer in Fort Ord, and I've heard a lot of stories and a lot of scuttlebutt about what goes on in Fort Ord. The point is that I think that a premature rod is in the offing. I think what we need to do is reverse those positions because I would feel much more comfortable having a rod in place that was adherent to the rule that's coming down the road. Um, and so that's one of the reasons I raised this issue, and I think that my point is still well taken. Um, the Army is doing interim actions to clean up unexploded ordnance, but there's no final remedy in place. This is a concern of the state regulators. It's a concern of mine as a citizen and taxpayers of the state of California and a taxpayer of the United States of America. I'm concerned that my tax dollars are not doing what I want them to do, which is remove the unexploded ordnance, and I want to know what's going on. Okay. Congress hasn't funded the EPA, so your tax dollars are even being spent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I thank you for the opportunity to present my uh,